So the best way to get good at solving math problems is just to do a million of them. I know nobody likes to hear that, but that actually works. Um, the reason your teacher always assigns a billion problems is because you need to do a billion problems to be good. So anyway, um, we've already had a session on how to actually solve these problems. So here is just me basically meant to be practice. So take a look at these problems, pause the video, try to solve them on your own. If you get the answer great, come back and make sure you got the answer right. If you didn't, um, or if you get stuck, then come back and see uh, what you did whenever you got stuck. So remember that when looking at these, the first step you always want to do is try doing some factoring if necessary. And then, I don't know what that's supposed to say. And then um, get rid of the fractions by legitimate means, of course. Get rid of fractions. And then you want to um, solve as usual. I like using that solve as usual because, you know, we're totally used to always solving stuff. All right, so take a look, pause the video, go solve these problems, and then come back. Now, assuming you've actually done that, um, you will now be a better person. Congrats. Give yourself a happy flower. Let's see what's happening. Yay! It's dancing. Dancing flower. Okay, that's the worst dancing flower I've drawn in a while. I apologize. All right, so now take a look at this problem. This is a perfect example of not knowing where to start. Um, but I do see things that look like they can be factored, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Dum -de -do -de -do -de -do. Ka chonk, ka chonk, because I'm the master factorer at this point. All this is pretty much done for me. Nothing more I can do to make that pretty. This guy here is going to factor into so This is a minus, so these signs are going to be different. And so this guy is going to need to be the 6, and this guy is going to need to be the minus 5. I can check x squared, minus 5x, plus 6x, minus 30, x squared, plus x, minus 30. Good. Alright, so I got that. Just going to make sure I do the right. So now I want to go and I want to multiply the entire equation by uh, something to get rid of the factor, to get rid of the fraction on the bottom. So it looks like all the terms on the bottom have an x plus 6 or an x minus 5. So I'm going to run out of room over here. Um, move over. It won't move. All right, so I'm going to multiply the left by x plus 6 and also by x minus 5. Now, by distributing that across, by distributing the whole thing across and over there, I can see that everything's going to cancel out in the first term and on the bottom, and the only thing I'm going to be left with is a 4x. Now, in the second term, the x minus 5s will cancel out, but I'll have an x plus 6 left on the top. I need to make sure I leave that in parentheses. It might be easier for you to see it if you rewrite it as 2 times x plus 6 instead of x plus 6 times 2. Now over here on the right, the x plus 6's will cancel out and I'll end up with a 1 times x minus 5 left on the top. Did I say that right? Everything, this x minus, x plus 6 cancels out on the bottom. I'm left with x minus 5 on the top. Now, I need to do some distributing. 2x plus 12 equals the 1 can distribute, but it's just going to have the same effect as x minus 5. Combining like terms, I want to move my 12 over. And I want to move my, wait, not that. I want to move my x over. And divide by 5. I get x equals negative 17 fifths. Now this is something I always do, and I just realized I did it again. I have an x on the bottom, right? I have x's on the bottom. I need to make sure that I'm not dividing by zero. I always forget to do this, um, and and everybody always forgets to do this. But it's really, really an important step. Now in this case, if I plug in x equals seven, negative 17 fifths. Is that going to cause me a divide by zero error on any of these? The answer is no. Um, if I plug in 17 fifths, really the only things that will give me a zero would be six, a, po a negative six or a positive five would give me a zero. So if I put a five in here, that would be 
a zero. If I put a negative six in here, that would go to zero. Same thing for this guy over here. So um, you just want to make sure that you're not dividing by zero, but negative 17 fifths is not going to give me a problem, so I'm good to go there. Right. This problem is a little bit more interesting um, just because you're, you need to go with your gut instinct, and honestly, with math, sometimes things are just going to look weird, and you've got to trust it's going to be okay. Because in this case, the thing you want to divide by is a times b times x. And generally, whenever I teach this class face-to-face, -face, people will say, is it a, b, x? And they're like really scared. It's like, what's going to happen if I say this and it's wrong? Good thing it's not wrong. So um, you want to be, come on. Okay. Um, don't be afraid to give the right answer. It's kind of silly. But um, yeah, it's good. You got it. Don't be crazy. So let's go and distribute this guy across and across. Now on the first term, the a's cancel out, everything else remains. The second term, the b's cancel out, ah, and everything remains. That was silly. Okay. And in the term on the right, the x's cancel out and the a, b remains. Now if I want to actually solve for x, which I didn't actually tell you to do, but I guess I assumed that that would make sense. Um, this is always kind of weird. Um, sometimes people can see it, sometimes I can't. What if I pull an x out? And then I'm left with a b plus a. Sometimes people can see it like this. Um, sometimes they can see it and it makes sense if they do it like this. Sometimes it makes sense if they rewrite it and pull the x out. It's just really weird. Different things work for different people. Um, sometimes it helps if they write it like this and pull the x out. So whatever way you can see that makes it make sense to you, um, ultimately what matters, and it, again, it doesn't matter what direction we put it in, that um, what matters is you can get there one way or another. Okay? So now to actually solve for x, I divide both sides by b plus a, and that ends up with ab over b plus a. Um, over here, it would look like this. Again, these answers are all the same, they're just written differently. So however you see it's fine. I'm just showing you a couple of different ways because I always notice face to face that this problem always seems to give people a harder, harder time trying to figure out how to exactly solve for x. But it's the same thing as if you had like 3x plus 2y equals 6. I mean, sorry, 3x plus yx equals 6. And then you pulled an x out and you ended up with 3 plus y equal to 6. And then you divide both sides by 3 plus y. So you'll end up with the same thing. It's the same strategy. It just looks weird, but it does have applications. You actually see this in circuits, believe it or not. And, uh, and this is just a good little trick to, to have. Now the next problem that we're going to do is take a look here. It's the same thing that we had before. Again, remembering that when you have an x on the bottom, you want to make sure that whatever answer that you get, that you don't get a divide by 0. So I want to multiply the whole thing times, it looks like, x minus 2, because that will get rid of everything in the denominator. So um, here that's going to be x times x minus 2. Then the x minus 2 cancels out, give me 14, then 7x, and then 1 times x minus 2, like that. So now I've just got a couple more things. The one you can distribute or you can just say it's just 1, 2x plus 14 plus 7x plus x minus 2. So let's move everything to the left. Oh, I can combine some like terms first. Um, 8x minus 2. Subtract 8x and add 2 to both sides. 
And that gives me x squared minus 10x plus 16 goes to 0. Uh, now, theoretically, I should be able to factor this out. And I get x, x minus and minus plus 2, 8, and 2. And that should work. Yay! Okay. So that means x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. So if I add x, add 8 to both sides, and add 2 to both sides, I'll end up with x equals 8, or x equals 2. Now I was going to check for divide by 0. Okay, so if I have 14 over 8 minus 2, that's okay. Same thing for 7 over 8 minus 2. That's good. So 8 is good. Um, now let me check to see if something bad will happen when I plug in the 2. Um, 14 over 2 minus 2, and that gives me 14. So finally, finally, we now have an example um, where this goes bad. And this is usually why I always forget to check, is because it only happens like maybe 20% of the time. So I always forget. So this is actually a throwaway answer. It's invalid. So the only answer that I have for this question is this equals 8. Like that. Get it? Not too bad. All right, now we have one more problem. This one's not so bad. I just, just kind of want you to have some fun with it. So the first thing we want to do here is factor. So I've got y over 2 is y plus 1. 2y plus 3 over y plus 1. <coughs> so I want to multiply the entire equation on both sides by, it looks like, 2 times y plus 1. 2 times y plus 1. Over on the left, the entire denominator cancels out, so I just end up with y. On the right, I still have the top, but the y plus 1 cancels out, so the only thing left is a 2. And I'm just going to write it in this order because it's easier for me to see. Pull the 2 across, so I've got y equals 4y plus 6. Um, let's move the y's over here. 0 equals 3y plus 6, and I can make the 6 over, minus 6 equals 3y, so I'm actually going to write it as 3y equals minus 6 just because it's easier to see. Divide both sides by 3, and end up with y equals 2. And again, I forgot to check. Ah, I'm so sure about this. So I want to check or divide by 0, and in this case, I should be fine. 2 over 4 plus 2, and then whatever, blah, 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 over 2 plus 1. Basically, if I got a negative 1, that would have been a bad answer, but I didn't. So I'm completely content with 